Greetings hobbies, this is Arsans of all, and in this tutorial we're going to be arraying an object along a curve, but without the object deforming. So I'm hoping this is going to be a pretty useful tutorial for people. I've had a couple of people asking for this, specifically for how to make things like tank tracks. Because in theory, tank tracks are really easy to make. You've just got an object that you're getting to follow along a curve, and you can array that. But the problem is, if I just show you this as an example here, if I was to form this, which is going to be the teeth, for what's going to be a chain axe, what I want this to do is I want this to follow along this path here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go into edge mode. I'm going to press Ctrl and R to make an edge loop here. Escape so that it's dead center because that's where we want our teeth to be. And then I'm just going to select the top edge that I want it to follow along to. And then probably somewhere around here. So I'm holding down Ctrl so that we've got the shortest path. And then I'm going to press Shift and D to duplicate that. Escape, so it's back where it should be, right in the center, P, and separate by selection. And now I've got this object here, and if I click on this axe head 1, we've got this, which if I press G, we can move around, but we want it here. Then I'm going to go to Object, and then Convert to, and then Curve, because we need this to be a curve. And if I go into Edit Mode now, you can see that we've got that as a curve. So now... I can make this follow that curve, which we've got called axe head one. Now, first things we've got to make sure, if you followed my rope tutorial, you should know this. To make sure this works, I'm just going to select that axe head curve and then that, and I'm going to press forward slash on my number pad to get that isolated. And then all we're going to do is I'm just going to move this to that origin. So I'm just going to press shift and S if you've got machine tools to move the cursor to selected. And then this one here, I'm going to press Shift and S, or you could do Object, Snap, and I want to snap this to the cursor. So selected to cursor. Now, just to be clear, you could have done that first bit here by clicking Object, Snap, and Cursor to Active while having the line selected as well. So that's always an option. So this is important because we need to have the origin of both these objects in the same place. But once we've done that, I can just select this add modifier and curve and I can just select this line. And oh, it's got it in a bit of a weird angle here. Let's try Z. Oh, and that wants to have this at a, this angle. So all I'm going to do is go into vertex mode, A to select everything, R and Z. And I'm just going to rotate that 180. And then if I go back in, we can see that's now the right way around. So, great, we've got our object sorted. Now I will say this probably isn't exactly where I want it to follow along. So if I go into vertex mode, uh, you'll see why that's because the origin is here and I don't want that. So if I just press G and move everything so that the origin is pretty much centered there in the middle of the circle and go back into object mode, you can see now it's in the middle of the circle. And then all I need to do is add a modifier, array, the array does need to go above the curve, and then I need to change this because at the moment it's on the X, I don't want that, I want it on the Z, so we can do something like that. So I've got my chain, and we could do this with our tank tracks, oh isn't this going to look fantastic, except for, it does look fantastic at the top, but at the bottom, this is looking horrible. If you notice, what this is doing is it's deforming everything along the curve. And normally we want that. We want this deformation along the curve. But in this instance, we really don't. And this is where people go wrong with doing things like tank tracks. They'll have this and it will curve the tank track around instead of the tank track being a fixed solid object that's pivoting around a point. So how do we solve this? This. Well, this is normally something where people get quite frustrated about, and this is normally a problem area. So that's why I wanted to cover this in today's tutorial. So we're going to undo this for a second. So I'm going to get rid of that array. I'm going to get rid of that curve modifier. And I'm going to press G and move that slightly out here. So the way we need to sort this is by not actually arraying this object. We need to array something else that doesn't deform and then attach this to that non-deforming object. When I go through this, you'll see what I mean. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Shift and A, and I'm going to bring in a plane, which is going to be just there. And usefully, because I've got the cursor in the right place, that's going to, well, 
appear where we want it to. It's on the same origin as my curve is, which is obviously important. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this plane and I'm going to make this plane go along the curve. So I'm going to do exactly the same process. I'm going to add a modifier, I'm going to add a curve modifier, and I'm going to select my curve. I need that to be in the Z. So you'll notice that's there. And then I'm going to add another modifier. It's going to be a, an array that needs to be above the curve. And I want that not on the X, I want it on the Z. And all oh, that wasn't working. Well, the reason it's not working is because it's relative offset and this is a plane, it has no Z height. We could do this on the X or on the Y, but there's no Z to make it go along. So we don't want relative offset. We want a constant offset. So instead of doing it by its thickness, it's just doing it by an amount. So I can do that. And what you'll notice here is that this is going to follow along my curve or if I do my array to have more, it's following along the curve. I'll bring that down a bit. We'll have to fiddle around with this later. But importantly, this is still a plane and it's not being deformed. So we need to get this onto our plane. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna do something called instancing. Now I have done another video on instancing. Uh, it's a nice quick way of doing rivets and it's really useful. I'll put a link in the top right hand corner so you can go and have a look at that. But what's great about this is if I click this and then shift click my plane, I can press control and P and I'm gonna parent this to the object. And you'll see this brings out this dotted line. Now, normally this is good. Parenting, what this allows us to do is if I move one thing, it will move the other. Obviously, this looks a bit weird because of the curve modifier, but it means that you can almost stick things together, which is really useful for things like Boolean. But the other thing I can do is if I come to this orange box, which is object properties, there's an option called instancing. And what I can do is I can set this to either work on the vertices, which means that it will make a copy of this parented object, what we'd call the child object, to each of the vertices, or I can do it to the faces, and that's what we want. And you can already see how this is looking pretty good. This is exactly what we want. And you'll notice that none of these are deformed. And if I come into my options here and bring down my constant offset, I can bring that to probably where I want it to be approximately. So I can shrink that down slightly. So, I mean, this is looking pretty sharp as it is, but everything's offset. Well, you'll notice this is being offset by the same distance that the origin is from where the origin was of my object. That is equal to that. And that's because this is one of those classic instances where we want the origin to be in the same place. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select that object, press Shift and S, with machine tools. Obviously you can do this the slower method by going to objects and the versions there. And I want to move my object to the cursor. And as soon as I've done that, it's working. And you can see exactly what's happened now. It makes it much more obvious. You can see here that that's the plane. And if I isolate everything and turn off the curve, you can see that basically each plane is here same place as the origin and they are being arrayed up. So what happens here is one copy moves on to this face and then it makes another copy on that face and another copy on that face and another copy on that face. So what effectively has happened is I do not need to make an array for my teeth or what could be your tracks. I've got that making duplicates of itself on the planes which are being arrayed and I can carry that array going up and up. So now we have an object that's not being deformed. Now, this isn't a perfect technique. I wanna be really clear about this. You'll notice it has some problems. For example, here, we've got a very nasty offset here that doesn't look quite right. There are ways around this. The big problem here at the moment is that it is making a copy of itself from its origin. If I just come in here, we can see that origin is on that circle. So that's probably not gonna help anything there because, well, that means that everything's sticking out directly perpendicular to the face from that circle. So if I actually just go into vertex mode and press G and Z, 
and I move everything down compared to where it is on the origin. Appreciate this isn't easy to see with this being there, so I'm actually just going to H to hide that. Let's go back and see it. So if I go into vertex mode and then G and Z, what you'll notice is I'm moving down the object compared to its origin, and the origin is going to be where the plane is. So at the moment it's just a bit below the center of this cube area, and now it's doing the same here. And what that means is that I can control how much offset's happening because it will stay perpendicular to that point. So I can sort of fix that by doing this, and that's normally how I would fix this. And now we've got a much better looking chain. I'm gonna bring that there, and we've got probably one more, something like that. We've got a chain axe, or if you wanted to, some sort of tank tracks. So that is how you can make an object follow a curve, but without distorting or deforming the object itself. Hopefully that was clear. It's quite a tricky thing to explain this because you've got so many things referencing off something else. So it does get a little bit tricky, but hopefully that was clear. If not, feel free to ask. I can always try and come up with another way of explaining this, but just say what bit you didn't understand. Now there is one thing that we do need to do though, if we're going to 3D print this, and that is dealing with one problem. At the moment, these objects, I know this sounds weird, they don't exist. They are make-believe. If I do anything, if I, for example, apply all, and then decide that I want to get rid of, let's say, all of these planes, because, well, they're just sticking out being annoying, and I delete them, everything gets deleted. And that is because these don't exist yet. And you can see, even if I go into vertex mode, that actually you don't have access to these vertices yet. Now, what's quite cool about this is it does mean that I can edit something about this. For example, let's say I go into face mode, control and R, and then do that uh, face, and then E, screw that out, and then vertex those, snapping and GG, like make a hook. All of my objects have just gained a hook. Uh, which is really cool. I'm going to undo that. I don't want it actually being all hook-like, but that's definitely an option. But what I do need to do is stop this. I need to say, no, this is where I want them, and I want you to now make these real. And we have something if we press Control and A, which is the Apply menu, and as part of that, we can do something called Make Instances Real. You can also do this up here, Object, Apply, and make instances real and as soon as we click that you'll notice now this has become a separate object to the planes I can now delete the planes and each one of these is its own object which does mean you can still start for example rotating this around if you want to move them and do some final little tinkering with your positions but do not forget You've still got your original instance somewhere. It's probably worth deleting that out so that you don't get this mixed up and create a really weird object. So for those of you that are asking how you can make tank tracks work on a curve, I'm hoping that has solved that problem for you. Or for other people, I hope this has given you another cool way of using the curve modifier to do something that you might have been having a problem with. And if it has, do please say something in the comment section. It's great to hear what people are doing. And if you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel. The more people subscribe, the more YouTube tells people about the channel and the wonderful algorithm of life goes on. Have a great day, guys.